free BC. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to 3BC. This is your girl, Joy, the cultural liturgist for this cultural conversation. I have three BCs here today, Chloe Casey, the alchemist, and Zeglemazon joining us today. And we have a special guest, Miss Kimber from Black Nerd Power. She's joining us today. It's another crossover. Over, we don't have Richard today. Another crossover. Over, 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 over episode. Hi. Hi. Hey, Kimber. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for making the time for us. Um, Off the top, too, I first want to dedicate, before I tell y'all what we're talking about today, I want to dedicate this episode to my homegirl, Ish. We were like thick as thieves in in New York, and now she's, you know, in D.C., and I'm, of course, back here in Memphis. And it makes me think of Kimber because we were like, you know, these niggas don't like us because we be talking and reading and thinking and shit. <laughs> so, you know, some certain men, you know, particularly like in New York, there's like all these athletes and rappers and whatever. I'm like, them niggas don't like us. For one, we got Damn. natural hair. But we be talking, reading and thinking and shit. They don't want none of that, y'all. You know, shut the Damn. fuck up. Especially so, thinking. Yeah, exactly. So that leads me to the topic today women that be talking and reading and thinking and shit and the reason why that's important and why Kimber's perfect is because her segment and I cackle so is Kimber be reading and shit so her segment on BNP is Kimber be reading and shit so I cackle Reach so your like, name oh, that perfect <laughs> perfect combination perfect so ladies what are y'all thinking and reading and shit about right now Amazon got a stack of books over there. Why don't you yeah. go first? She got a stack of books. Yo, what you thinking so, of reading? Shit? This pandemic, right? Had a lot of time to think. Had a lot of time to be to myself, and you know, not physically engage with my circles. And so it, it really has allowed me to look at the same narrative that we've been talking about as far as black women not being heard, not being seen, uh, not being protected. And so a lot of what I've been reading are black women that are still with us, black women that have passed that have been talking about this for a generation. So people like Toni Morrison, I have Toni Morrison's The Source of Self-Regard. Um, I have the anthology, The Black Woman, that was edited by Tony K. Bambara. I've been reading Wounds of Passion by Bell Hooks. And just yesterday, I got a collected poems of June Jordan, and it's titled Directed by Desire. And I honestly just think that it's part of my Black woman education. Like, I want to come out of this pandemic when the world opens back up just as a better, more whole Black woman. I think we're always constantly evolving. And one of the things that Toni Morrison said in one of her essays is that, you know, life is stranger than fiction because life is random, but fiction can be predictable. And as much as we plan, as much as we try to do our self-care and go to therapy and be reading and thinking and all this shit, life throws us a curveball like gunshots yeah. feet or, you know, being, you know, hunted down, uh, being knocked to the ground like a black woman here in Memphis Um, has happened to her. And so as much as we would like to believe that these guiding voices that are inside of these books can give us some insight, life is still very random. And just being prepared for that by once that randomness hits you, how do you pull yourself back together? And I think all of these books kind of talk about putting your life back together, putting your soul back together in a world that does not want you. So we have to create our own worlds for ourselves that's what I'd be reading. And in some ways, too. And in some ways, it gives us an escape as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a good escape. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Miss Kimber, let's jump to our guest of the day. Miss Kimber, what you reading and thinking about? You know, so what I'm always thinking about, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's a real delight to be here with you all. And I am so excited that despite Richard's insane title, people actually are taking somewhat of the things I say about books seriously. So thank you very much for validating me in the midst of his psychosis. (laughs) Um, 
That said, I have not been doing very much of the intellectual work of the Black woman during the pandemic. I am opting more for escape. The latest escape, I escape through romance novels. I escape through Westerns. I escape through fantasy novels. Lately, I've been escaping through a set of books that I'm thinking of is like Be Gay, Do Crime. So my sister, the serial killer, wherein the woman is literally a serial killer. She's eating these hoes like a praying mantis. Mm -hmm. It's insane. It's absurd and really exciting. I'm also really interested in books that are talking. It's really it happened naturally. It's probably Facebook controlling my brain. But lately, I've been thinking about women, black women in like uniform because, you know, Kamala and all that kind of stuff. And it led me to a book called American Spy by Linda Wilkinson. And it's about a woman who was in the CIA and like goes on a spy mission as a black woman to as a black American woman to Africa. Um, and then there's a couple of short stories that are about like kind of justice work coming out of justice work It's called Uptown Thief. And it's about these social workers who are like, who become sex workers um, in trying to make ends meet, but also become like vigilantes and start killing up niggas, which is always what's up. Um, I love when people go ahead. I and love when they try and people. I enjoy this. I enjoy fantasy novels where like it's people fiction, are like, Kimber. Is that it's fiction, right, Kimber? That's yeah, fiction. all of these are fiction books. They're you know. It's oh, I was wondering if somebody really was just like killing folks. Wait, so no, called, absolutely tell me that unknown themes. No, no, unknown it's themes? called Uptown. I had it wrong at first. It's called Uptown, Uptown. Thief. Uptown Thief. Uptown Thief. I want to. I'm interested. All right. Yeah, and I have too. That sounds good. So I'm. I'm really just. I'm really just into black women fucking shit up like okay and there's also another novel that came out very recently called Trouble the Saints by a woman named Alea Dawn Thompson and this woman is an assassin who like basically has to like go on a mission to save the world and it's banging it has like lots and lots of those great elements from YA novels that we enjoy that really drive that plot forward for us but it's a more mature kind of novel than the ones that Alea Dawn um, Johnson has written before so I was looking forward to it because I'm not a big YA fan like I put I I won't cussing and I won't definitely cussing and hopefully some fucking in the book like ideally <laughs> you know what I'm saying and so like YA, YA ain't really vibes for me necessarily all the time but that particular one I I really did thank you Kimber I'm I'm taking notes we're taking notes over here um ladies KC what you got okay um I'm going to go ahead and out myself. I just finished Jessica Simpson's autobiography, and I got to say, I liked it a lot. I mean, y'all, y'all know I went, oh a couple of years ago, I went on a mission oh to read Lord. nothing but Black lady author books. And so <laughs> I found a ton. I found a whole world of them, thankfully, on, on Twitter. Um, but, you know, in these COVID times, and my pockets are a little bit tight, I had to start going to the library and I go to the one on base. I try to support Tinker. Um, and I saw her autobiography in there as I'm going out carrying a stack of books and I'm like, Oh, let me grab it. And I mean, it was good. It was very, uh, it was very Jessica Simpson ish, you know, but it, it had some, um, very inspiring things in there. Like I like the fact that she went from, Oh, I'm wholesome and I'm going to save myself until I get married and I'm going to be a virgin, you know, in this picture of purity to, yeah, I met my second husband at a party at my house. And when I met him, I was like, you know what? You should stay. And he stayed the night and, you know, and they've been together ever since. And she's very open about, yeah, you know, yeah, I had sex with my husband on the first night that we met. And what? Fuck these niggas. What you waiting (laughs) on? Exactly. You know, you putting them in a plastic bag? You going to put these niggas in a food bag? I told you the church messing us up. Messing us up. (laughs) 
I mean, you know, you're grown. I mean, as an adult you woman, grown. you make a decision as an adult man. You shouldn't be still cleaving to boyish notions about sex and then puritanical notions about sex because we all know at this point it's bunk so when we know better what we do better so we can be cleaving to that foolishness it's all crazy and at this age 40 plus most of us i don't know how miss camber is but 40 36 you're close enough that's close enough no 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 36 i'm 30 i know but it's close enough (laughs) <laughs> that's unreasonable <laughs> you know what I'm saying a lot like, can happen between 36 and 40 and trust me no no I'm not <laughs> saying that I'm 40 I wasn't trying to say what I was you said you didn't know how old I was and I was just saying what I was 36. it's close and you know between from you know 35 or so you are fully grown and that you have done a lot of if you single you done a lot of fucking most likely if you really married, you know, done a lot of fucking baby. Huh? Ask me how I know. I mean, you can you can be married at this point and have done a lot of fucking. Like, Correct. It's like you just depending on what your sex life is, you've done relatively a lot of fucking. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You just may have had fewer people, but Correct. you still did a lot of fucking. It's Correct. a lot of ways yeah. to be married. Male you just female. might have done a lot of. Oh, that too. Yeah, too. <laughs> we had Let an me, episode about. Yeah, we that had a show on that too. <laughs> oh. I remember. So, uh, Chloe, what you got? Well, my breeding has been kind of slow because I have actually been working more during COVID than I did before all of this happened. So I've still been trying to read here and there. So I have been reading The Color of Law Forever. And basically, it's about how um, laws that have been um, implemented over time basically forced um, segregation, even after segregation, and fair housing laws, and how um, basically we've all been. Um, that although there were laws that said you can't discriminate in housing, there was no way to enforce it. So there was discrimination in housing by making sure black people stay in certain areas, eventually move to the projects because we know projects weren't really built for us during the um after the Great Depression as part of the New Deal, they were meant for white people. And then they let us move in there and put, uh, abandon them basically, and let the white people live in the suburbs. So it's just telling how laws have driven um, racism. And then a new book I'm about to start reading is The Vanishing Half. And it's by Britt Bennett. And it's about a set of black twins who basically, I'm really using basically a lot um, a set of black twins who happen to be uh, have a pale complexion and pass for white so they decide to pass for white and run away from Louisiana and both of their paths are different and they talk about how making that decision affected both of their lives I just want to shout out uh, to this book club um, that's on Facebook Sip and Flip Book Club, because that is the book that we are currently reading. And the meeting is actually on the 29th. If anyone wants to even just hop in, you know, I'm like, hey, whether you read the book, whether you didn't read the book, just hop in on a discussion. Well, you had me at Sip, so. (laughs) (laughs) Before the flip part. (laughs) So. I'll have to join because I'm I'm very curious to get into it and get started. Have you started reading it yet? Or am I outing you if you haven't? You're outing me a little bit, but it's all oh, okay. Good. Well, we just said we're going to start reading it, so we'll start reading it. But that's what I'm going to start reading. Yeah, uh, I have my homework done ahead of, of, of class. I am with Miss Kimber. With the escapism, um, I have a book. Well, I have some books that I've like toggled, toggling books. Like the first one, I really just jumped over to Eloquent Rage because I wanted to read that. And it was speaking to my soul and my personal brand, if you will. So I started reading that and I'm limping along in that. And I also ordered um, Hitting a Lick with a Crooked Stick, the Zora Neale Hurston book. And then I also uh, reordered The Souls of Black Folks because I wanted to reread it. So that's my stack that I got to get through. But the escapism piece took me to Netflix. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's not reading, but it was making me think because I've just all of a sudden I've been, I guess since we're so caged, I have been thinking about travel like other places. So I started watching like Canadian, you know, then I was like, oh, I want to go to Montreal. So I started watching Canadian TV. Then I started watching British TV shows. Then I started watching. <laughs> um, See, that's what now, I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Now I'm deep down the, the rabbit hole uh, on the continent because I've been watching all the African shit. So, and y'all, some of it is terrible as And they hell. have some good African shit on Netflix right now. Some of it I is mean, terrible, though. Some, some of is it terrible, good. but they're having some, some very well-made movies now. And the I way that... Bad. I think that we're brushing a really interesting conversation, which is we're trying to talk about TV, but we're talking about like you said, which is not reading, but it's a really good opportunity to talk about how incredibly literary TV has become. Because when you think, you know what I mean? Like you think about shit like Lovecraft Country, like Mm -hmm. right now, like they spend the whole first episode and the Lovecraft Country radio uh, show, the podcast that uh, Ashley C. Ford and one of the writers from the writer's room of Lovecraft Country, another black woman, they spend that whole time like roasting. It's like a, de- it's not a, a aggressive roast of Lovecraft. It's just talking so matter of factly about what a racist misogynistic piece of shit he was that mm-hmm. and like talk and thinking and thinking so interestingly about how they even the name of the text is like roasting him. Like it's crazy how literate and how much of Africa we get to experience and yes. understand how much they are the same as us. Like that's what I learned from African TV. Like damn they know no, we said they the same but no they the same the same but also different, different. And so right. we're, ex- the we're time. using TV. Exactly. We're using TV in the same way that books were used before, which is through mm-hmm. to create experience and to build empathy. Right. So it's nuts to be having this conversation right now and how we tried to get away from books. But here we write, are right back at reading and literary and literary traditions. And I love right. that and you mentioned that right and Lovecraft to the, too. For me, it's connecting me to the culture in a way because I haven't been to Africa yet. Um, Ghana was actually on my short list because I wanted to go with my family, but um, and but I I like to see a lots of parts of Africa, and I I just found it so fascinating. I feel like I'm just learning in a sense, a lot more about the continent and people, the way they love and relate to each other, but also the Western influence is like the way, you know, it's so strange. The Western influence on the continent is always so strange to me, but um, I've been watching all, I've watched so many African shows, so many. So apparently one of the real good ones that people have to catch is that one that's like suddenly single or something. There's a new movie. I saw that one. Already. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the name is. How was it? No, I have heard nothing but really good things. And I felt I used to live in Korea. And when I was in Korea, I was real starved for blackness. And so I yeah. fell down a Nollywood hole. Like you couldn't tell me shit. Yes. It was over with. But once I once I was no longer starved for blackness, I didn't watch so much Nollywood anymore. And I have a I'm kind of picky about it. But that movie, that was that movie was good, girl. You need to watch that. And it's trending <laughs> heavily. So, and, I mean, it's ranked pretty high yeah. on Netflix. And you shall also watch An African City. If you've never watched An oh African City, girl, okay, good. Best. I knew y'all was on game. I knew y'all I was on game. Okay. It. I love yes. it. Yes. And I was so excited when um, um, Mama um, Maya was here in Memphis. I was so excited. I got to interview her for my column. In That's the paper. so cool. It was so cool. I was like, oh my God, I love an African city. She was like, what? I was like, yes, girl. Yes. Let me tell you something. The fashions are on 15. Let me tell the fashion is on 15. But that, that show is amazing. If y'all haven't seen an African city, go check it out. You do have to pay for it, but you know, support a sister and everything. And I was like, bruh, this is dope. Like, we binge watched the whole thing. It was just awesome. The fashion is on Black as King. Yes. Yes. That fact. Mm. At Black as King, just a side note, had all these African designers, and it was amazing. Y'all. Uh, amazing. I want me Shout a velour bodysuit. It's going down. I'm going to find me a velour bodysuit in lavender. It's going down. And I'm going to learn how to macrame. 
And when I get it. my macrame outfits, don't y'all be laughing at me because I'm, I'm sure gonna get one like that I don't red give a one. Fuck if you on. laugh, it don't matter if they laugh because <laughs> I'm gonna wear it anyway. Bad bitches only. <laughs> period. What? <laughs> Stop. I, period. Laugh. Get my macrame <laughs> on. Laugh, but try to Before. catch your nigga. Hey, <laughs> hey, look, get into it. But before we wrap up, I want to I want to mention two things. There's some great documentaries on Netflix. Even um, documentaries, I like the visual, re- like visual reading for real. So that's some good documentaries. I haven't watched the Indian Matchmaker yet, but I wanted to watch that. Is it a documentary or is it a... Apparently, it's incredibly it's problematic. Show. I would urge you to... I would urge you to engage with maybe some South Asian people that you love and respect before you engage with that show. At least okay. so you can go in with your eyes open because okay. apparently the shit problematic as fuck and like... So oh, like, no. I've heard a lot of... And not problematic in a way that I feel authorized to talk on. Like, colorism is okay. colorism and yeah, black people, yeah. we know about that. And so on the one hand, like I understand, but that's why I feel that empathy urges me to like find out more about it. But okay. I also don't want to comment on it because that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, you know, hey, 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 that's y'all. Y'all got to talk about that amongst yourselves. <laughs> I, yeah. So some people were really talking, speaking, like how, talking about how interesting it was. They didn't talk mm-hmm. about how problematic it was. Same. But I, I feel the same about Love and Sex, the Christian Amanpour, um, documentary she did love and sex around the world so she went to these different places she went I to like that I think, one mm-hmm. yeah but i but i felt like the one in africa i think she was in ghana yeah she was in ghana and i was particularly interested in one in ghana and the one in india um with the hydra and that identifies women or live as women or whatever mm-hmm. and the um complex notions of sexuality in india but also just everything the attitudes towards sex in Ghana, I was like, I hit up my African friends. I was like, yo, we need to talk about this shit right here. Cause I was like, and when you said that, it made me think about that as well. I was like, we gotta talk about this shit. Cause I don't know. Like, I think I only, I think I only watched the episode of that, of that series that maybe the first one where the ladies was walking down the little pathway in the park and the the the, the aunties had all their children's names in the umbrella where you know it's like a park in China where people advertise their marriageable children to other people uh-huh. Uh-huh. that was one that, that was the episode of that of that particular show that Christine Armanpour show that I watched I saw half of the China one, you know, and then I kind of stopped at the bound. I feel that. I feel that. You know, I was like, "Eh." so I was really most interested in the one of, I skipped over to India and Africa Mm -hmm. because I was like, I really want to see these two. So on that note, we are women that be thinking and reading and talking and shit. You can get into it or not. We're going to be all right. (laughs) Ladies, thank you. Thank you, Kimber. We'll have to have you back again. Thank you to the Glamazon, Chloe, and Casey the Alchemist. This has been 3BC, empowered by the Kazuki Network, and we will see you next time. Keep reading, keep thinking, and keep talking and shit. 3BC, recorded at Kazukian Studios. Directed, produced, and distributed by Kazukian. Join the conversation at facebook.com slash 3BC.